now I will talk about the project structure that Angular CLI have created for us. And I have named my project first uh, that was generated uh, earlier and uh, it has three folders E2E, node modules and the source folder. And after these three folders we have different configuration files. At the end we have tslint.json file. This file is used for building our application. We can change the configuration that how our application should be built. And up above that we have tsconfig.json. TS stands for TypeScript. If you have worked in Angular 2, you should know that Angular application from Angular 2 uh, use TypeScript for developing our application. So it contains the configuration for our TypeScript. And we have a protractor.conf.js. Uh, it has a further testing configuration in it. And up above that we have package.json. Packet.json contains all the dependency modules uh, that are required for our application. It's up to us that which module we want to use for our application. Like if we want to use underscore JS library, if we want to use grunt, if we want to use Bower library, then we can add the version and the name of that uh, dependency library and then we can write and uh, execute a command npm install it's gonna execute all the dependencies that it will find and install that dependency after downloading inside this node underscore modules folder you can see that right now under this node underscore modules folder we have bunch of different folders and these are the libraries the dependency packages uh, that are by default added by angular cli in our project and uh, we can manage all these uh, node modules dependencies inside package.json file all right and above that we have karma.conf.js and inside it uh, it has configuration for writing unit test karma is the test runner and it uses jasmine as a framework and both of these uh, tester and a framework is developed by angular team for writing unit tests and above that we have dot git ignore uh, and we define all the folders or files which we want to exclude from our repository in our git and we have editor dot config uh, if we want to config our editor how much space should be added uh, the size of our um, character and bunch of other things and then we have dot angular uh, dash cli dot json it actually contains all the configuration of our Angular 4 project, Angular CLI project. You can see that it has a project name. Uh, by default, we the name that we define at start has been added in our name property. And after that, we have apps property configuration. We need to define the source folder. Right now, this is a source folder which contains all the code, HTML code, CSS code, our TypeScript code, uh, if you want to create components, pipes, services, directives, all should be inside the root directory. And we have defined in Angular CLI.json folder that JSON file that this should be the root directory that needs to be created. And after that, we have assets folder default. And this is the starting point of our application, starting point of our TypeScript to be executed at start. And bunch of other files, we have a styles.css, all the CSS styles should be written in our style.css file and we have a bunch of other configuration that I'll be talking about uh, further as I'll be uh, going you through in this tutorial. If I open up my source folder in my first project it has three further folders. We have app folder, assets folder and environment folders and after these three folders we have a bunch of other individual files for the configuration of our source directory. So first one is a favicon.ico for the icon for our website or an application uh, and we have index.html that we have just opened. Uh, this is the head tag. It has a, a meta tag and the link tag for our favicon and after that we have the body and I just showed you that how we change the element or the structure uh, inside the body and that shows up in our browser. You can see that it's showing up in my browser right now. I'll just uh, show you that where this thing is coming from. Uh, so let's come back and after that we have main.ts file and that was added by the angular cli.json uh, that I just showed you. Uh, this one that this is where our TypeScript 
uh, start executing when our application start. So at start of our main.ts file, these are the libraries that are imported by our Angular 4 project and we have our Angular core library, we have a platform browser dynamic library uh, that is used uh, to make our application run on multiple uh, browsers and after that we have app.modules library that is the parent module of our whole application and after that we can uh, set if we are in a production mode or we are in a development mode and I'll come back to it later and after that I am setting out uh, it actually not I am setting out but it actually uh, defaults settings uh, by our angular CLI and I'm calling the bootstrap module function I'm setting out the a root module which is app dot module uh, right now and I'm sending out this module to my bootstrapping my application and after that we have a polyfills this is used for the backward compatibility for our browser and after that obviously we have a style dot CSS all the stylings that we want to write should be within the styles dot CSS and the test dot TS file is used to uh, write the uh, unit testing it has a karma uh, already added and some of the configurations but I'll come back to it later uh, once I'll start writing unit test for our application and tsconfig.app.json is an important file and inside this file we define our configuration that how our application should be compiled when we run it that uh, how it should be uh, compiled and showed on our browser now if I open up my app folder within the source folder we have a component and app.module.ts file so let's first open up our app.module.ts file and let's see what inside it first of all uh, these are the references of different libraries that needs to be imported before it being used so first one is the browser module uh, that is used to uh, make our application browser compatible that our application will run on browser and this is the reference for our this library and after that we have the angular core ng module this is actually the container of all other modules uh, once uh, we want to import these all these modules uh, we define the add module declarator and inside it we import all other modules and after that uh, by default angular CLI imported and added the reference for our uh, forms and HTTP libraries for handling the forms and HTTP requests in our application and app.component uh, is being imported for uh, declaring our main component for our application and this these five lines are just the references of all these libraries platform browser core forms HTTP app.component we are not using these component actually right here uh, we want to import all these libraries that we have referred right here we need to uh, refer all the libraries like this and store the reference within the variable you can call it a variable and after that within at ng module uh, we want to set the declarator uh, this one is the declarator and then we need to import these libraries make sure you remember this a way of referring all the libraries and after that we define a declarator and import all those libraries that we have referred above all right and after that we have defined the bootstrap and all these things within the ng module uh, declarator and we have given it a value app component that is used by the bootstrap whenever our application runs and after that we have exported our app module uh, and this is where we will start writing our app component code and this is the uh, parent module of the whole angular 4 application this is not the part of any component but this is the parent module and above that all the four files app components.ts app components.spec.ts app component.html and the css files are one component if i open up app.component.ts file uh, you can see that it has imported angular core and stored the reference of this library in component and after that we have a declarator component that is used to refer all other files that will be the part of this component like if I have 
if I want to create a component, component must have an HTML file, its style file and its TypeScript file and all these three forms of uh, languages are a scripting files uh, form one component. Alright, so the component file must refer to HTML file and CSS file in order to become a whole one component. Alright, and after that we have exported our app component class and we have set our title that app works and this is where our app works coming from in our browser and if I want to change it let's uh, say I want to say app starts and I want to save it and it's gonna reload inside it and you can see that it has changed app works to app starts because this is the one and only component that was by default created by angular CLI and uh, we have set our title app starts and above that we have app.component.spec.cs and this is the file in which we write the unit test for our TypeScript file which is app.component.ts file and .spec is the recommended name uh, of our unit testing file uh, by default it has a few unit tests already written but we will write our own unit test as we will proceed uh, in this tutorial series and above that we have HTML file uh, and inside the HTML file we are binding our title element in our h1 element alright if we want to create other variables and we want to bind that uh, we can bind the same variables within uh, this uh, this kind of things and we can use the directives that we'll talk about later and above that uh, we have app.component.css files right now uh, by default angular CLI haven't written any CSS file inside it but we will write CSS file if we uh, uh, obviously we want to create our own custom component that we will be creating after uh, discussing this uh, structure so that's it for the app folder and after that we have assets folder all the images all the audio files or the text files uh, needs to be added in our assets folder if we want to change this folder we need to go to angular.cli and we want to add a new folder inside it by by default assets folder is the folder that we want to use for our uh, assets directory and after that we have environments folder uh, right now I don't want to discuss about it because uh, you want the understanding uh, right now uh, once I will proceed further uh, and I'll talk about the services directives and components I'll come back to it and explain you what's it's uh, what this folder is all about uh, so let's get started working with creating our custom components in angular 4 <laughs> 